This podcast is not a substitute for a relationship with your mental health professional. Hey, 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 family. Welcome back to another episode of the Mental Health is a Lifestyle podcast with your girl, Andrea Wise Brown, and my bestie, Celeste. Hey, Hello. hey Celeste. Hey. Okay, so um, I'm so happy that we are back again. I'm happy that you are feeling so much better. We're going to jump right in with Love is Blind UK. Um, what we do here on this Mental Health is a Lifestyle podcast and we, is we talk about everything mental health. And a part of mental health is relationships relationship and um and, and we want to be in healthy relationships and so for us we thought that it would be fun to look at other people's relationships and kind of point out let's just say maybe some behaviors certain specific maybe unhealthy characteristics um some red flags that some of us may see in our relationships um that we may ignore however it's kind of like having a magnifying glass, looking at somebody else's stuff, hopefully, hopefully, well, because what the goal is here is for you to ask yourself. So hopefully it will teach you something so that you can ask yourself, okay, wait a minute. Is that me? Am I doing that? Am I overlooking that? And then what can I do better to move forward? What you thinking, best friend? Yeah, absolutely. I think it's so much easier to look at other people and you can see things right away. But if you're actually experiencing it, right, you figure out a way to rationalize it if it's what you want, right? If it's something that you want personally, you will figure out a way to, um, you know, make your, uh, twist your mind into a pretzel, you know what I mean? Just to kind of make it fit. So, yeah. I think it's interesting. So that's, I think that's part of, of course, that's part of the reason why I love relationship reality yeah. TV shows. Yeah. I think so too, best friend. I think for you, that is the thing. Yeah. I think that's why you love them. That's good. It's good. And, and I think, um, and it's fun for me to sit with you as we look at these relationships and for you to give your perspective and me to give mine, you know? Um, yeah, it's fun. And I think for me, I don't, I didn't actually, and if it wasn't for you and Ayana, I wouldn't look at them. Well, it's because every day when I go to work, I have relationships sitting in front of me on the couch. Yeah. So, yeah, so I'm I'm helping people daily with their relationships. So, you know, I don't necessarily want to go home and then look at relationships <laughs> on TV. <laughs> so it's like taking your job home with you. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, 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 yeah. However, but this is fun to do this with you, and I think it makes sense. Cool. Okay. All right. So, Love is Blind UK. They've had the reunion. Um, The show before the podcast episode before the last one, we introduced the couples, the couples that stood out to us. So, now we are coming back to kind of pull them together and to show everybody where they are and we can talk about it because this is we we save uh <laughs> our comments until we come here together um so we can talk about it and hopefully people who are listening you know hopefully y'all watching it too and y'all have uh y'all may share some of our perspective on the show so who you want to start off with best friend i want to start out with sam nicole and Benaya. <laughs> and the reason why, because I love a good love triangle. I love a good triangle. It's a little messy for me. So, but, um, so just to recap, you know, uh, Nicole went into the pod, Sam and Benaya. She was dating both Sam and Benaya in the pods. Uh, Benaya initially said, you know, she was having feelings for Benaya. She kind of expressed them, but Benaya wasn't sure that he was where he, where she wanted him to be. So she's like, well, you know, Sam is saying everything I want to hear. So I'm going to go with Sam. And then fast forward, you know, they go to Corfu uh, for the for the honeymoon, pre-honeymoon thing. And and she doesn't show up. 
to the pre-honeymoon thing uh, because then they flash and they show us that she decided that she didn't want to go with Sam. She wasn't feeling Sam. So she wants to meet with Benaya. She meets up with Benaya. They profess their love to each other. Will you marry me? Yes. And they roll off to Corfu, right? So oh, then they oh, show wait. But wait, best friend, hold on, because I want to point this out. Because we did talk about them before, but this was the couple where she did choose Nicole chose Sam and Benaya. So let me, ju I just want to just bring this in because I want to talk about their characteristics. Because Benaya um, is a Caucasian man, Sam is a yes. Caucasian man, Nicole is a black woman. Okay. Yeah. And so Benaya is more hippie. He's like a hippie dippy and flower child. He got this long, luxurious hair. And so, uh, but Sam is more, you know, like clean cut. Sam um, has had a nose job uh, and probably some other surgeries. You know, he's very um, uh, interested in the superficial and what things look like, right? In the surface, you know, he gave us that the feeling that, you know, he really may be challenged with connecting, um, you know, in a, in a deep way, in a real way, in an authentic way, he was more concerned about what things look like. And this one thing that we said before in our last time was when she, he said, uh, when she kind of inferred, when he said something like, oh my God, you make me feel so good when they were in the pods and they hadn't seen each other. And she said, um, oh, he said, um, I, I want to just pick you up. And she was like, oh, you, and then she stopped. So for him, that triggered that she was about three tons of fun. So, so, so at that moment, he goes away like, why would she have a problem when I said I want to pick her up? Why would it be a problem? He goes back to in the quarters with him and the guys, and he starts to talk to the guys. Well, Benaya, the other guy she was dating, overheard him. And Benaya hadn't seen her either, but he saw that that was a judgment. And it was a superficial judgment about what she looked like, opposed to love being blind, what is heartfelt. But there was something that you pointed out last time. You said that you also didn't know whether or not Sam knew that she was black. Right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so I needed to point that out because then, like you said, she wanted Benaya, the one with the long float, the hippie hair. Benaya yeah. goes in and tells her, listen, you are, you probably shouldn't trust an uh, old dude. You shouldn't trust him. You know, you may want to wait on me to get my stuff together. You shouldn't trust him. That's right. That's right. Well, as women do, some of us who just want what you want, instead of really listening and grounding, praying on it, listen to your gut, you know what I'm saying? She wanted what she wanted. And she felt like, I do want me, so <laughs> I want to get married, I'm going to take him too. Okay. So she chose him. They right. come out, they see each other, and when they saw each other, Sam just kept saying, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. But you know what I kept hearing him say? It's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. And I heard, what color, what color are your eyes? Are they boring brown? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yes, he did. He yeah. just, he was so concerned about what she looked like. And every time he looked at her, he kept saying, it's okay. It's going to be okay. He was talking to himself. <laughs> like <it's gonna> <laughs> Right. <laughs> I got this little black bunny. It's going to be okay. Okay. She ain't three tons of fun. She is small. It's going to be okay. Right. For everything. And then what did he say? What did he say? What color your eyes? Are they boring brown? Are they born? When I heard that. <laughs> and then he said, but it's going to be okay. Even though they are born brown, it's going to be okay. He said, oh, no, they're beautiful. They're magnificent. Whatever he said to cover up the dig, right? So that was a dig. Disguised as a quote unquote compliment, right? Like a backhanded compliment. Make you feel insecure. Like a little, let me put this little insecurity, boring brown. Why would you? Yeah. And they say, oh no, it's okay. They're beautiful and they're gorgeous. 
That is like, is that a compliment or is it not? Like, why would you? And they are, bro. They are boring. They are boring brown. If my eyes are actually boring brown, <laughs> then you've already criticized them. You've already made your call about the color of my eyes. You can't then turn around and say, oh, they're magnificent. They're beautiful. Boring brown is boring brown. I don't know how brown gets sparkly, <laughs> turns blue, green. It's boring brown, period, in the story. There's no shades. <laughs> like, like, you know, maybe light brown. I don't know. But he just said boring brown. If her eyes are dark brown, that's pretty boring, I guess, to Sam. But anyway, anyway, moving on. Yeah. And to your point, right, why was that the adjective he used? Because his ass was bored. He was bored looking at <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There, wasn't, there wasn't eyes that you can swim into, you know what I'm saying? Like water, like, no, 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 they was boring. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. okay, so then, right, she chose him. That's He chose her. They were supposed to marry. But then what happens after that, Celeste? They don't make it to the pre-honeymoon in Corfu. They meet each other and something jumps, something does not click for her. And she's like, I made the wrong choice. I need to end this. Let me go. Let me, let me find Benaya. I need to speak to Benaya. And Benaya is excited because he really wants to speak to her too, because he feels like he failed her and that he wasn't expressive, expressive enough about his feelings for her in the pod. So he said, I need to say these things to her. And so when they do meet up, um, they both, you know, they profess their love for each other. And, you know, he says, I went home to Germany and I was around my family and I was very depressed. I was very sad. You know, he says that like, cause he felt like he had dropped the ball. Um, you know, by not telling her in the pods, no, I'm, I feel the same way about you that you feel about me. So they got to that meeting, they both poured their hearts out and then they flew off to Corfu for the pre honeymoon. Yeah. Yes. And when they were, yes. And being together, right? Yeah. So let me ask you, right. Do you yeah. like them together? I, I like them. I I like them. I like their connection. I think Benaiza seems like a very sincere guy. Um, I did have an issue um, when it was time for them to all meet as a group. So when we get ready to get to that part and we fast forward. Don't so, you know, so they go to the, the pre-honeymoon. We I think we talked about the pre-honeymoon, their trip to Corfu, all the couples and stuff. And so when they get back home, they move in together. And, you know, we're going to fast forward to where they actually going to meet up with everybody again, the other couples, as well as other people who were in the pods, mm -hmm. you know, the in the group. So not just people that they connected with, but other people who were on the experiment with them as well, that other couples may have um, connected with. So as we're talking about Benaya and, and, and Nicole and Sam, then, you know, of course, Sam shows up at this um, meetup at the bar with everyone. And so uh, Sam immediately, you know, he's like, he wants to talk to Benaya. Benaya is not feeling him. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, before that, before that, they talk about the meetup. And Nicole tells Benaya, when I see Sam, which I will, when I see, I want to give him back a brace, the bracelet he gave me and the ring. Because mm -hmm. I want closure. Mm -hmm. And Benaya, surprisingly enough to me, to me, did not, wasn't feeling it. Mm -hmm. Like, he's like, no, it's done. It's over. You don't like him. I don't like him. We said we don't like him together. We are not doing, we got, no Sam. No, 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 no Sam. And she's like, no, this is what I need for me. I need closure. I don't want any parts of that relationship, any remembrances of that relationship. And he's like, I told you he's a bad guy. <laughs> don't do it. He's like, but Hey, if you want to do it, I support you. So I, I don't, well, we'll get to that. So, so to me, that's pours over into the meetup with everybody. Well, between, I, 
I think let's talk about the meetup. We're going to handle one couple at a time. Did this look okay. Awesome. So then they get come to this meetup where everybody is here. So that's the thing. These couples leave, they together, they chose each other. And then what the show does to put in, to stir it up a little bit is they bring these couples who have been on vacation together. So whether they lovey-dovey or not, they bring them back to a bar, to a meeting place. And then they invite all of the other exes, all of the other couples that they didn't choose, but they had some connection with. So they bring that in here to stir it up a little bit, right? Like, oh, okay. Oh, let's, let's cut, like, is, uh, what is it? A devil, devil's advocate. Like, like, let's bring in the other woman that you was also dating or the other guy. And so that's what you're talking about when you say, now this is a time that Sam is going to show up again, Benaya and Nicole, along with the other ones. But yeah, let's finish talking about them. So they show up to this thing, Benaya doesn't want Sam. Uh, Nicole to even talk to Sam like hey we together we good she was like no I must do this go ahead yes so she says yeah I must do this and he's totally against it so anyway she uh, Sam comes in he's a little late to the party because he's got to make his dramatic entrance he shows up late to the party he's got an agenda and 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 and, and so he's like well I got I'm gonna talk to Nicole so he he talks to Nicole and He's as he's speaking to her, he brings up a scenario where, you know, sorry, it didn't work out between the two of us. You know what happened? And she's like, well, when we were in the pods, I felt this way about you. But, you know, I have a strong connection, whatever she said about Benai, because we're really that's not really the 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 uh, what is it called? The, the pinnacle of the conversation, the high point of the conversation. He said to her. Yeah, you didn't want to be with me because I wouldn't sleep with you the night we met. Yes. And I was just trying to be respectful and do the thing. I think I did the right thing. He's like, he just kept in any chance he got in that conversation, he'd bring it back in. Yeah, because mm -hmm. you tried to sleep with me. Yeah, because you were trying to be intimate with me. Yes, because you, you know, wanted me. I didn't want, like, it was just, I just want to drive home this point that, you wanted to sleep with me, and I said no, and that's why you chose Benaya. Yes, which I thought was disgusting. It was disgusting. Yes, that was the gaslight, the huge, the biggest gaslight ever. And I think that he also used that to take to make himself feel better about himself. In denial about the rejection about re about being rejected absolutely yes so he told himself that and he couldn't wait to throw that in her face he also couldn't wait to say that on television so they could have it and so that she could he could also throw that in her new man's face because he couldn't wait to talk to benaya but benaya was not having that no so she comes back and she's talking to Benaya and Benaya, and she's like, you know, what we had in the pods was real. You know, it's over. I'm glad I gave him back his necklace and his bracelet. I mean, his ring and I'm sorry, bracelet and ring. And I, I just wanted that closure. And Benaya is like, we hate him. <laughs> it wasn't real. <laughs> what you felt in the pods wasn't real. He's a fake. And she's like, listen, I'm just dealing with my feelings and what I felt at the time. And I'm telling you, that's what I felt. That's how I felt. And I don't want to discuss it any further. Yeah. And Benaya still is like stuck on like, yeah, none of that was real. We hate him. <laughs> Get on board. Get on the train. We but hate him. He's a bad guy. Yeah. But you know what that reminded me of? I was like, you know what? This, this is one thing I get with Benaya. Because his thing was, I saw that he was a bad guy. I told you he was a bad guy. And yet, I need you to see that he's also a bad guy. Like, I need you because I'm not really feeling, because I'm feeling a little insecure. I'm not really feeling like you have totally 100% chosen me because he's a bad guy and I'm a good guy. I think that Benaya probably feels really good about the fact that he does move around in the world as a good guy. And he feels like he has a big one up on him. So if anything, my woman needs to know I'm a good guy and he's not. And so, because I think for him, that gives him more points. But when she like skirts over that, she's like, no, I mean, he's a, he's a good person. He's cool. But now is stuck like, no, 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 no. I need you to know he's a bad guy. And it just reminds me of, you know, when we're in relationships 
And, you know, when let's say your person that you're in a relationship has an ex or someone that they've dated, <laughs> and you want to be in a position where you be like, she's a B, or she fat, or she ugly, or she this. And then they be like, I mean, nah, she ain't. You be like, see, like, you want them to agree with you because then that makes you feel better about you. And you feel better about, well, maybe they don't see them like that. So I got one up on them. Like that, that was kind of, you know, what I felt like Benaya was trying to get her to see. Like, yeah, I need you to be all the way team me. I need you to see him as a monster. I need you to hate him so I don't ever have to worry about him again. Yeah, and I think it was. I think he was, he just felt like it, it, if that Sam could come in and say some pretty words to her and she might just be out the door again. She might flip back over. But what she was trying to say to Sam, what she was trying to say to Benaya is, listen, no, it really is over. I am all in with you. I just... What I what I felt at that moment, at that very time, I thought was love. I thought I felt this way about this man. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm going to deal with. And I don't feel that way anymore about him. I want to close the door respectfully mm -hmm. and not give him the energy. And but not, so I think they were on, to me, they were on two separate pages. So I'm glad she, for me, I was like, good thing. Just shut the conversation down. She's like, I don't want to talk about Sam anymore. We're done. But then... Oh, Sam is not finished. Sam is like, I still want to talk to Benaya. We got to fig figure this out. And so Benaya comes in. He's like, I don't really want to talk to you. I don't think you're a good person. I heard what you said in the pause. I was there. I know what you're about. I think you're a big, fat phony. And Sam was like, yeah, but your girl wanted to sleep with me on day one. And I didn't want to sleep with her. And, and I, I didn't want to sleep with her. Boom, boom, boom. The shots fired. Pow, 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 pow. He wanted to call a thought. He wanted to call his girl a thought. She's a thought and she wanted me. And I just ain't want her. That's why she chose you. Lies. 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 But Benaya was right on top of it. Benaya was like, yeah, okay. Benaya started laughing like, you just proved my point. You're not a good guy. Look at you making a fool of yourself, clowning yourself on national TV. You're going to look like an idiot when this is all said and done. It doesn't matter what the reason was and how dare you come on this show and say something disrespectful about the woman I care about. Benaya was done. I was all for it. Good for Benaya. I'm so team Benaya. I think I need a t-shirt. I'm so team Benaya because, and let me tell you why I'm really team Benaya. Because Benaya is a hippie, but he gangster. And I <laughs> Benaya is about that life. Like, I want him to do crip dances. Like, or, or whatever. <laughs> he about that life. Like, he looks soft. Like, with that hair. Baby, that hair, that hair be cascading. He looks <laughs> soft. But Benaya ain't soft. Benaya, like, you don't want none of this. Yeah. Benaya's like, yeah, you just proved my point. I don't care nothing about that deuces and walked out and was like yeah he said some he went back to, to nicole said i told you he got me back there and said some more disrespectful shit <laughs> something about intimacy <laughs> and then the thing he's like i don't care if it's true or not you don't have to, why would you do that that's 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 personal that's between you and her yes. why would you try to bring that why would you try to do that so i'm 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 for it so anyway moving on sam 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 is done. He 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 thought he came in and, and shot, he thought he shot up the club, made a, made a fool of himself. Blew up in his face. And he didn't probably didn't even he didn't even know it when he left there. He thought he had done something too. He thought he had really accomplished something. He was like so, popping his collar. <laughs> he was popping his collar on the way out the spot. Everything. So anyway. So, um, you know, spoiler alert, you know, they do the reunion. Guess what? They're still together. They're happy. They're traveling the world, doing, living their best life. Sam, they called Sam out. Sam got clowned for about five minutes, had to apologize or, or pretended to apologize. And he's still the same dude. Um, and that was it. 
yeah, that was that. That was that on them. Yeah. So I love that. I love that they are still together and I am rooting for them. So they Ooh. have now been married for a year. They made it through a year. They've been doing well. Like you said, traveling the world. They were still so lovey-dovey, like genuinely lovey-dovey at the reunion. So I, I'm here for it. I love it. Okay. Yes. You want to go yes. to our next couple? Who you want to roll over to? Let's do Demi and Ali. Let's do Demi and Ali. Come on, Demi and Ali. Demi and Ali. So, okay. I want to go back to when they were in Greece. And that's kind of where I want to pick it up. So when they when they were in Greece. Can I say something first? Sure. I just want to pull in. I want to pull in the family as to who these two are because I'm remembering oh what we talked about before. So well, we introduced y'all to Demi and Ali. So Ali and Demi, they both are, appear to be black. And so, um, but Ali is the male and Ali is an attractive male. And Demi is an attractive woman. However, Demi um, is full figured. She's a full figured woman. And it appeared that she had some insecurities while they were in the pods as to if the person who she connected with which was Ollie, if he was really going to still be there once he saw what she looked like. That was her fear. And you even said, best friend, you said that you really thought that her insecurities was going to play a really big part and was going to get in the in the way of the relationship. You know, that's what you thought. You was like, I think that her insecurity is going to kind of get in the way of the relationship. So she was really leading with feeling really insecure about her, her weight, her size, and the fact that she had endometriosis. Yes. However, she told Ali that she had endometriosis and, oh my gosh, like the prince that he felt like he was in that moment, he was like, I don't even care about that. We're going to figure it out. I'll adopt kids. It doesn't matter. They chose each other. They met each other. They saw each other and they both appeared to be happy. Okay. So then they go away on their little, I guess, trip vacation, the same one that they all go on. And so this is where you want to start us off at on the trip. Go ahead, friend. Yes. So like I said, I felt like maybe her insecurities about her size and what she looked like might come into play. And I think it I think it showed up on the trip once they met um, Catherine. I think she was insecure about Catherine because Catherine and she were both dating Ollie at the same time, right? Mm -hmm. In the pot, in the pods. Mm -hmm. So, um, but Catherine decided to call things off with Ollie mm -hmm. and Ollie told the, everybody in the pods that he broke it off with Catherine. Mm -hmm. That becomes a little discussion later uh, when they all meet up. Mm -hmm. But anyway, talking about Ali and Demi. So they make it to Corfu. They're doing that at the, the pre-honeymoon. They're still kind of like they're getting to know each other. It seems like they're getting along. But then it comes time where they got to meet up with the other couples. Mm -hmm. Right. And this is their first time kind of seeing everybody else since they get to Corfu. Is that correct? Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. So they, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. She's a little, she's wondering what is, what is Ollie's reaction going to be to Catherine? When he sees That's, her, because he had yeah. never seen her looks before. And she felt very insecure about her looks, talking about Demi. And so she knew, she knows that Catherine is an attractive woman. And she thought that when Ollie saw her, well, she was afraid that when Ollie was, uh, was to see Catherine, that maybe he would have wished that he chose her instead of Demi. That was a fear. Yes. And so when they're all in a group setting, he gets to see Catherine. You know, she's a nice looking woman, according to Catherine. Demi is so clouded just trying to see what this connection is. If there's a connection between these two people that she just does it. She's not herself. Mm -hmm. Right. She just kind of, she's withdrawn. She's observant. The other ladies are kind of putting thoughts in her head. Like, what's going on there. They're laughing. They're this, they're that. And she's like, you can see her just kind of like withdrawing from the conversation and not being her usual bubbly self. Mm -hmm. And so um, I thought that that was interesting. And you also see Ollie because Demi's like, you're not affectionate with me in front of everybody. And Ollie's like, 
I'm just being myself. I don't like this pressure. And and you know what he said? This was something that I caught too. He said, I don't really like PDA. I don't like like the, you know, to display, you know, uh like love in the public. That's what he said. Yeah. Uh-huh. That's what he said there. But go ahead. And I think he also caught on to the fact that he was being watched. Yeah. He's being watched. He's being watched not just by Demi, but by the other ladies. Jasmine and and Demi are kind of tight and stuff. And so, but then, you know, Jasmine is like putting doubts in Demi's head, Mm -hmm. you know, based on what she sees and how do you feel? And then at some point she decides I'm going to confront Ollie myself and figure out, hey, where you stand? How do you feel about Demi? Like, you need to reassure her. You need to reassure her. You need to reassure her. He's like, hey, 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 stay out of this. This has nothing to do with you. And I think that made him more standoffish. Not that he doesn't like PDA, because I don't know that that is a fact. But I do know being put on the spot with a spotlight on you. Hey, show us how much you're into Demi. Show us, demonstrate to us how much you love her. So we all know and stuff. And so, cause you see everybody else hugging up around here. Why aren't y'all hugged up? What's the problem? You're not feeling her? That's my friend. You better be feeling her. You better not. Like it was a lot. And Jasmine was, was wrong for that. And I think it put Demi in a really bad headspace. No, I totally agree. I totally agree. And that's where friends need to know where their place is, Right. Her place was not in their relationship. She needed to keep her eyes on her and Bobby. You ain't have no need. No, that was not your business to be looking over and really, like you said, stirring it up. In her head, I do believe that she probably thought she was helping her friend by fighting for her friend, but that's not what her friend needed. You know what I'm saying? So you ask your friend, what do you need before you jump in it? Your friend is not you in a relationship. That's you. And I clearly could see her acting, doing all of that with Bobby. Because, you know, we're going to talk about her and her mama. So I could see her doing all of that. But that ain't who Demi is. And that is not what is, that is not their relationship. So to your point, friend, she was, she was stirring it up. She was making it worse than it was. And she had nerve. That was not her place to confront Ollie. And yeah. and Ollie, if Ollie would have cussed her out, he would have been right. He would have been right. He would have been right. But instead, like you said, what he did was he removed himself. And and I think the fact that Catherine was there, that was his first time seeing Catherine. So yes, he had a connection with Catherine, and he had a connection with um, Demi when they were in the pods. But Catherine was never, ever, ever a threat to Demi because he was clear about who he was attracted to, no matter what she looked like. And that was the thing, right? That's the thing about insecurity is that, you know, when you don't know all of that and you're outside of that in your own headspace, you don't know. And so she really didn't know, you know, how he was going to respond to this woman once he saw her. But he was really true to what he felt but just being a human being a a male he okay this is his first time seeing us so he's seeing her and he see yes she is attractive and then they want to have the conversation but he never wavered he made a little joke and i think men do stuff like that but he never wavered in his stance of listen i might go over here and have this conversation with this chick but trust me like you're the one that got my heart Like, you're the one that I want. And I love that. I love that about Ali. Yeah, and I think that people don't... You can find someone attractive and not want them. You know what I mean? Like, I can recognize that an ex was attractive, but not still want them. And I know my partner, my husband, has attractive exes who I can look at and say she's very attractive, but I'm not worried. Not worried. And so I think Ollie did a good job reassuring her. So anyway, that's great. Fast forward, they get back to London. They move in together. Everything seems to be going great. And we're going to go to the, you ready to go talk about the the meetup, the second meetup in London? Yeah, we can talk about that. But I just wanted to say this before they did that. What was interesting to me was all the other couples had sex and they weren't having sex. Like they, oh, they yeah, 
said they were not having sex. And what she said, she said that um, because remember when they had that first meetup, they were asking because I think that was the first oh. night. Everybody was asking, like, so did you do it? Did you hit it? Did you hit, you know? And they was like, no, 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 no. And then Demi was like, no, you know, that's not it. So to me, I was wondering, like, you know, why is he not trying to have sex with her? I really was. I was trying to, I was wondering why he wasn't trying and she wasn't trying. I, yeah, that was interesting to me that they was on this fabulous vacation. Everybody else was screwing, but they weren't screwing. But okay, yeah. But then they they made it past then to go ahead to living together. Now, do you think? Well, of course, once they started living together, they you feel like they were sleeping together. Correct? I think they were sleeping together then, and I actually saw them touching each other in public, holding hands in public. Right? I saw the, that yeah that display of affection in public i saw that i saw the public display of affection yeah when they were at the exactly. supermarket mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah so when they got to the second meetup that's what i found interesting like they were definitely more affectionate towards each other <clears throat> excuse me mm -hmm. so it's not that he doesn't like pda that's not true he said it though in, he said that he said it that he didn't like pda at when they asked him in the beginning, right? But I'm um, to your point, I hear you, but he said it. He said, Well, I mean, that's just not my thing. Yeah, he said it. But as we're saying, there was so much other stuff going around. And we also learned that he suffers from ADHD. And I believe he has, he probably suffers from having a lot of anxiety. And I think in that moment, that whole thing just had him so anxious. He was detached from himself. She was detached from herself. So he could, they, they weren't settled in, right? They weren't settled into themselves so that they could meet. They, they just couldn't. They were both kind of trying to survive being detached from themselves. But when they started living together and they had settled down, they were grounded, they were connecting, I believe having sex, hanging out, having real conversations, telling about themselves. That's when he told about his ADHD. She told about her insecurities. He felt really safe when she was talking to him. Then you would see they would be shopping and holding hands, touching each other, because I think they felt safe and they felt grounded. Absolutely. And I'll say that to say that I am, um, when I first met my husband, right, I told him I'm not a mushy kind of girl, right? Mm -hmm. I don't like all that mushy stuff, all that hugging and kissing and in the bed cuddling, like uh -uh, sleep on your side of the bed. I got mine. And I will say over time and the more, the more secure and safe I feel with him, it's good. I literally like when we get ready to cuddle, it's me going towards him to go to sleep at night. I feel so safe with him and that pulls me towards him because I trust him. So I think, like you said, that comes with growth. Everybody's, you may not, people who say they don't like PDA, if it comes natural, you don't even necessarily know you're doing it. Now, I don't, now we're not going to be tongue kissing out in, in the middle of, you know, you know what I'm no, we're not doing that. You ain't never seen us do that, girl. Cut it out. <laughs> but, you know, we'll hold hands and whatever and those kind of things out in public. But um, I can see where Ollie is coming from. And I'm glad I felt like their um, growth was very genuine um and organic like it was very naturally grown so when you see them when they meet up with the group the second time she's more confident because she's he's probably had been has been reaffirming her or his feelings for her while they've been together and living together and so when she goes into this she's not worrying about other people and other women walking through the door she knows that she that how he feels about her and she feels safe. And after that, they seem to be connecting and they are loving on each other. And I'm thinking this is a positive thing. Like, oh, shucks. We've got, she's gotten past her insecurities. He seems like he's doing the right thing. They seem happy. They get walked down the aisle, wedding day. And what I thought was interesting was before the wedding, when they arrived, you know, to get dressed and everything, she basically said she hasn't heard from Ollie. Cause they, you know, they split up before the wedding. They go to their respective places. I'm not sure how long they're split up for, 
But she says they, she hasn't really heard from Ollie. And I thought that that was interesting. Yeah, I, I think I, I think I heard that too. And I, and I was kind of tracking. I was like, mm, this doesn't feel good. It didn't feel good. Mm hmm. Yeah. So. Okay. You know, so, but you still, I'm still hopeful that they're gonna, you know, okay, well, fine. But she still seems pretty positive that this is the guy. So I think. But long story short, they get down the aisle. They say what they have to say, and they said, you know, do you take this man to be your husband? Blah 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 blah. She says, I do not. Yes. Yes. Yes, she canceled so, it. She canceled it. He was ready. He wanted to marry her, but she was. She said no, no, uh, uh. She said, "I choose me. I ain't choosing Ollie. I'm not choosing Catherine. I'm not choosing. I'm not choosing Love Is Blind UK." <laughs> she said, that's "I right. am choosing me." She said, "What this experience has taught me was that." I am insecure and I need to work on me. I am not finding my security, you know, my confidence in another man, another woman, <laughs> in friendships, yeah, you know, and what I look like. She said, no, 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 no. I am not getting married. I'm choosing me. I was like, wow. Yes. Yes. I was totally impressed with her. Totally impressed. I did not see that coming. I knew that she felt stronger and more confident in herself. She told the ladies, hey, I feel like I'm, you know, Demi 2.0. I, I see things differently now. But I did not think that she was going to say no. The only thing that made me think that it was a possibility was when she said she hadn't heard from Ollie. Because I felt like she's like, I deserve better than that. You need to stay connected to me. Mm -hmm. That's what I require. So I think, you know, she, through the process, she learned what her requirements were and Ollie didn't meet them in the end. So she said, I don't. Yeah. And I think that shocked everybody. It was so good because so many people had so many judgments, like he was the prize and that she yes. wasn't the prize just because of her size when she's a beautiful woman and she not even that big. But just no. because she was a little larger than the other women, they were really acting and treating her like, and treating him like he was the prize. Well, baby, she showed up and she was like, no, I'm going to teach all of y'all. I'm the prize. That is correct. <laughs> I love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Me too. Me too. Okay. So let's move on. Let's move on to Jasmine and Bobby. I just want to move on to Jasmine and Bobby. So Jasmine... <laughs> is the friend of, and that's why I wanted to kind of go leapfrog over to her. She was the friend of Demi who spoke up for Demi, right? So she was the one that spoke up for Demi. Um, and she was, um, you know, uh, got into, um, got into Ali's face about, you know, well, this is what you need to do. And this is what you need to do, whatever. So she's in this relationship with Bobby and they, I think um, he asked her to marry him pretty quickly in the pods, right? They got together really quickly when they saw each other, they were, they, they were pleased with what, what each other looked like pretty quickly. One thing I could say about him is, you know, he's, he is vertically challenged and he has um, this little curly hair. He's a handsome little guy, but he has this little curl curly hair. And she's, um, I guess, she, what I saw about her was, she's a petite woman, but what I saw about her, um, the thing that stood out to me was she always seemed to be, um, like, had a lot of makeup on. Like, she always appeared to me out of the other women to, like, to put, like, to have, um, to be done up you know, more so to me than the other women. Mm -hmm. So they choose each other. They have a good time together on their trip. He was in, he was, he's a singer and a performer, right? Yes. Was there something you wanted to say about him or them? Uh, no, not really. They're not a couple that really stood out to, to me that I was particularly, you know, invested in, to be honest with you. Um, but... I mean, they had their moment, you know, um, I think I saw a little bit of her insecurity when he, you know, she was worried about a music video, um, that he had done. He's dancing all close up on this girl. And 
I don't know how long ago the music video was or whatever, or what, how she tied that into them now, or I, I don't know, but they dealt with it, I suppose. I think the insecurities played out with when she found this music video because he was a performer and he did this video, I don't know how many years ago it was. And I think she was kind of um like picking on him about him being in this video with this woman and pretty much letting him know, like from this time forward, that right there is not what you're going to be doing. Like you ain't going to be hunching and humping and bumping and grinding on no other woman. Okay. So she pretty much was trying to let set the stage like boo, you know, you still going to be singing. Cause if you're going to be singing, the only person you're going to be hunching on is me. So she kind of did that. How, and this was the thing when her parents, cause you know, the parents came in. So the parent that she had to come in to visit them, to meet them was her mother. And I understood where she got all of her insecurities from because her mother is extremely judgmental, extremely controlling, extremely critical. And this is how, this is what happens, mothers, when you're all of those things, you raise insecure women as daughters. They turn out to be very, very insecure and through their insecurity, they turn out to also be controlling. And so those were some of the behaviors that stood out to me with her and him. Was She was very controlling over Bobby. Like she, they would have a conversation and then she'd be like, so how do you feel? Like, do you feel like me? Because I feel like that. Do you feel like me? And then Bobby be like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I could feel like you. I'm going to feel like you. Yeah, yeah. I feel like you. <laughs> He definitely did that, right? <laughs> in, in almost every interaction, she'd be yeah. like, so I'm mad, I'm mad, I'm mad. she look at him. So you mad, you mad? He'd be like, I'm mad too. Like, like, yeah, yeah you're right, I'm mad too. Baby, how we feel? How we feel? Yes, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, I, yeah. You're right. Yeah, you're yeah. absolutely right. Yes. And then that mother came in that house and she was asking him all those invasive questions and being critical of him. And she even told Jasmine told him before she got there, told the night before, listen, let me tell you who coming here tomorrow and let me tell you who she is and what it is that she does. So it did prepare Bobby. Right. And then Bobby even said, because he's passive, but I like Bobby. Bobby right. even said, because if it floats your boat, I mean, whatever, you can't have two tigers in a relationship. So somebody got to, you know, there's a yin and a yang. And I like Bobby. And so, yeah, but he was even taking hits from the mama. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He took some blows. He took some blows. He took them like a champ, though. I'm glad she prepared him, um, you know. But, yeah, no, she took some blows. What I found interesting about the mother and one of the things she said was after she did all the criticizing of Bobby saying, I don't approve, I don't like it. You know, he doesn't, he's not making enough money. I don't know what other criticisms, but then she said, I don't, I've been married twice. I don't want to happen to you what happened to me. So don't, she trans transferring her shit onto her daughter. Right. projection that's right yeah. all of her fears and her insecurity i don't want you to hurt like i hurt well you're gonna create it what we think we create you're gonna create it because he's gonna leave her if you keep on bobby yeah. ain't gonna bobby ain't gonna leave it bobby ain't gonna He's not, but he went into that before that meeting. He also went into that meeting confident. He's like, nobody, no nothing's gonna come between this relationship so they've had a discussion about this they had a they had a discussion and bobby got up from that table that mama was poking holes all in bobby bobby got them damn plates from that table and scraped them in the garbage and said i ain't going nowhere i ain't going nowhere scraping yeah. the, cleaning them dishes i ain't going nowhere <laughs> put some plugs in them gunshot wounds boom 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 put some plugs in <laughs> nothing's leaking here nothing to see here folks uh-uh uh-uh. I'm I'm with your daughter. I'm, She's with me. I'm, We're together. And I, with it. I love it. And so they marry and they're together. And very happy. Appear to very be happy. Appear they appear to be. They sit very happy. They have plans. They've apparently Bobby has probably moved in with her. <laughs> That's but he loves her. That's what he wants. And I, I, hey, listen, like you said, it, it, 
what's right for you may not be right for me. What's right for me may not be right for you, but what's right for you is right for you, period. That's right. So I'm, I, I'm cheering for these two too. I, I wish them all the best. Yes, me too. I mean, they appear to be happy. I don't know if she told him. She probably took his hand and looked at him and he said, yep, we holding hands. When they sat on that stage, she said, they said, y'all together. She looked at him. We together. He said, yep, we together. Like whatever it is that she say, whatever she say. And when yeah. I tell you, he don't look sad. He look happy to me. And she yep. looks happy. And guess what? The mama got her to be happy too. Yep. He's probably including the mom in plans and they can stick together because she still want to talk to her daughter every single day. She probably still is. They set up a healthy boundary for them where mom can still be included. And that's what she's happy about. That's it. Yes. And I, I really don't know if it's a healthy boundary, but like to your point, to your point though, friend, I think like you said, they still, the mom is still probably enmeshed in all they stuff. And, uh, and and they love each other. They probably let mama say whatever she want to say, and then they go and make their own decision. You know what I mean? Well, they go and they, well, Jasmine goes and makes their decision. Jasmine makes it, and they go have love, because, you know, they make a lot of love. Them two together, they be making a lot of love. So they probably oh, okay. make love. <laughs> Jasmine makes the decision. You need to come on now. You know, it's some good old love. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, yes, yes. Okay, all right. So now, and we have, oh, Kath so Freddie and Catherine, you know, you said Freddie was the cutie patootie. He was the, uh, <laughs> the, uh, funeral director. Yes. Okay. Freddie was done with her. Freddie was done with Catherine. I'm, I'm just skipping right there. Freddie was just done with Catherine who said that all of her dates prior to getting on Love is Blind UK ended I don't because she was so pretty. It was all about her being so pretty. Her, her her beauty got in the way. I don't see her being as she's a beautiful girl, but I think all those girls are equally as beautiful. Yeah, she's uh, I said she's beautiful according to Catherine. <laughs> you did say but that. okay, so here's my thing. Is she's a gaslighter, like Oh, she just made me so, uh, a couple of times she made me mad. First of all, you say you like this guy and you, you, Freddie, Freddie's cool, but every chance you get, you criticizing him. You want him to change this. You laugh too much. You too goofy. You too this, you too that. What is that supposed to mean? You stay mad at him. You were mad at him because he cheated on somebody else 10 years ago and acted like he cheated on you yesterday. Um, you know, then we get to the bar, we get to the bar, skip Corfu. We're at the bar now with the second meetup with everybody. And the, the ladies are walking in and she's like, well, do you, you know, he's like, what do you think of, what do you think of this chick? And what do you think of that chick? He's like, she's attractive. She's attractive. He's like, yeah, she's attractive. You said that twice already. Why are you, how do you think that makes me feel? You said it twice that this woman is attractive. How do you think this has made me feel? And he's just like, what did I do? You're the one that asked me what these, what I thought of these women. I said she was attractive. He said, yeah, but you said she was attractive twice. Like she just couldn't wait to be mad at, at, at poor Freddie. She just couldn't wait to have an issue with Freddie. But then she turned around because she also had a connection with Ali. Sam. Mm -mm. Oh, no, so she had a she had a connection with Ollie in the pods, but Ollie with the pods, yes, right. Then she runs into Sam and has a whole conversation, sits down, giggling, flirting, telling him, "I want that ring. That's the ring I really wanted. Can I have it?" <laughs> like, but you were just mad at Fred five Freddy five seconds ago because he said somebody was attractive twice. Yes. Oh. She was a hypocrite, a hypocrite, a gaslighter, narcissistic. Yes, she was very, very, very insecure. And she knew Freddie was just as attractive as she thought she was, right? And so, oh, you know what else I didn't like that she did? Oh, you know, I don't like this. Tried to embarrass him in front of her friends. So remember when she introduced him to her friends and they were all sitting at the table and she said to him, she said, um, he says that 
you know, we're different. And he even said that he said, because she likes to be out and about, that's not me. You know what I'm saying? More of an introvert. You know, mm-hmm. she, she likes to be seen or be on the scene. That's just not me. That's not who I am. And he wanted a, uh, he wanted a, uh, what's the, what's the agreement? He wanted the, uh, he wanted to make yeah. He wanted to get a prenup. He wanted to get a prenup, right? But pretty much saying, like, I'm just, I'm not as superficial as she is, right? She likes these high-end items. That's just not me, right? And then she at the table in front of her friends said, (laughs) because they said, well, what do you do? And she said, he's a funeral director. And she laughed. She laughed. Mm. Freddie just sat there. And those two women, you know what? They was just looking like, Okay, well, I mean, he has a job. I'm sure, like, what, like, what's wrong with that? Cause I and I think they were side eyeing, like, well, B, if you move over, I'll take this fine funeral director. I'll t- scoop, scoop to the left, scoop. They like, excuse me, Freddie, could you like scoot up to, to the left so I can move up on in there? I like funerals. I like funerals, and I like directors. <laughs> Yeah, they did. Yeah, they did. They're like, bitch, you crazy. You cr- like, you're crazy. The she- only time they bucked was when he said, she said he wants a prenup. Oh, no, no. Whoa, whoa. What if, whoa, we don't do prenups around here. It's a reasonable request. You just met. I'm not going to marry you and you've seen my house. You know what I do. Who knows? Freddie might even own a funeral one day. So, I don't know. He might be in in negotiations to purchase said funeral home. Who knows? He seems like a really smart guy. So yeah, prenup makes sense, especially in this particular situation. I didn't care for Catherine. I didn't care for Catherine either. But let me tell you something. Anytime you, if you come to the table and all you got is two quarters, you don't ask for no damn prenup. So if he was asking for a prenup, Freddie's sitting on some money. Freddie, that family, that mama, that sister, and it probably is Freddie's funeral parlor, but he probably didn't say that. He probably just put out there, I'm the funeral director. If all you got is two quarters and a penny, you would not be saying, uh, let's do a prenup. So if you, if Freddie was saying that, that's because Freddie got something. And you see Freddie bought that chick some earrings. And you, and so at the end, just when it was time for them to have this marriage, and we don't know, the viewers don't know whether he's going to go ahead with this marriage, whether she's going to go ahead with it. Well, she wanted to. She was ready. She was up there, even though she was so critical of him. She laughed at his job. She tried to she shame him in front of his friends. She was so nasty to him. She was hypocritical, but she still wanted to marry him. Well, baby, he showed up and he gave sister girl some diamond earrings. And Bebe, they was a parting gift. And when he gave them to her, I knew it. I said, oh, he leaving her. Because it's nowhere in the world he's going to give her diamond earrings and then get up there and then say he's going to marry her and give her diamond ring. I knew that was a parting gift. And that's exactly what it was. He got up on that stage and said he will not marry that chick. And I'm here for it. Me too. And you know who clocked her right away? The sister. Yes, the sister Shorty. Mary Beth and Catherine, whatever her name is. That sister clocked that T right away. She was like, uh, 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 uh. And he said, he, she said, you're not being yourself right now. She said, what's going on and stuff. And he said, well, you know, she thinks she doesn't like, you know, she says I make too many jokes and she's got this criticism, that criticism and stuff. He said, I just don't feel like I'm good enough for her. And she said, maybe she's just not good enough for you. Ah, sister. Ah, sister. That's her sisters do. <laughs> oh, what's our girl from the other show name? Yeah, so just like like Irene. That's what we, that's what Irene meant when she was doing all that head turning, popping around. He's not. She's not good enough for you. He's not good enough. You know, it's just yeah. So anyway, glad that that's over with and there's a wrap. And then when they got to the reunion show, I don't even remember what the conversation was they had. Do you? Nope, and we ain't got to talk about it. Let's go on to Natalie. Let's go on yeah. to our last couple because, yeah, we, we was glad that, that he left. We was glad that he left. We was glad that he said no because we was, we was saying no. Yeah, definitely. I was definitely saying no. I was saying, yeah, I was saying no for her early on. So I didn't like her for anybody. I think Catherine has a lot of work to do. So if yeah. she wants to, I don't think she sees anything wrong with herself. So there's that. 
absolutely hopefully when she watches the show back maybe hopefully she'll get some insight no no okay well let's go on to our last couple tom and natalie he changed his tune so to speak i think he played the role like he appreciated their family and their family dynamic and i can see myself marrying into this and you know connecting with her mother she's so sweet she's so kind and but he's still, it was still going on in his mind. Like he was still judging. Oh yeah. In my opinion. Mine too. He knew he knew he was not gonna marry that girl. Like he 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 knew he did not want to marry that girl. He done already had the sex. He done already had that sex. He done had it. Yeah. And that was what he yeah. wanted. And he already said, You paying fifty percent. You ain't staying home watching nobody's kids. Your mom was nice. I'm going to work. You're going to work something other than doing makeup because that little makeup thing you go. Like, he already, he was out a long time ago. He was just trying to roll along with this show for as long as I guess how many episodes they get paid. But I believe that he was out too. And I'm glad because she, she, she's worth more than that. Yeah. Yeah. So what was interesting to me was when they went to the group meetup and, you know, he finally meets Tash and he totally downplays his relationship. Well, not totally downplays, but he kind of like, you know, we're not sure what we're doing here yet. We don't know if we're going to make it like we don't know. We haven't even decided. There's just so much to consider, you know, such a short period of time. Like who has time to decide in three weeks, even though you signed up for this assignment? Who has eight weeks to devote to this? And, and you can't know in eight weeks, now can you? And then then when it's all over with, he goes and tells Natalie that Tash tells him, at when they meet that she loves him and she's like in real time she's saying she loves you right now he said yeah i think she had more feelings for me than i have for her who said that she never said anything like that she said hey it was nice meeting you we had a good connection i really liked you she was completely respectful of his relationship and then he takes it back to natalie is like yeah you know she still loved me and she told me so and you know, I just, she just got more feelings for me than I have for her. So, you know, it is like, why would you do that? So like, you do because I think he was setting up a pivot. He was setting up a pivot. He was already setting it up. <laughs> so he don't look like his narcissistic self. So he doesn't seem like the bad guy. Once he reaches out, cause he didn't already had this sex, realize she ain't going to work for me. So, so I can pivot over the Tash. So I done already said it. So now she know. You know what I'm saying? Like this ain't, I'm not creepy. I'm not a creepy guy. This is what this girl already said. She already said she loved me. You know, this ain't working out with us. You know, I think he was setting up the pivot. But why say it that it is, she said it to, why tell Natalie she said this to me in real time? Like she just said, she told me that she loved me and she's more into me than her. Like that's, I mean, that has no bearing on their relationship. It doesn't change it one way or the other. Even if he wants to do a pivot, it doesn't matter. To to do that is just that was for him. That was for her, his own pat on. He pat he te- he told himself his a lie. Listen, he can't himself because nobody told you that. She didn't say that to you. He didn't even believe that. I don't think he believed that. But no, he even the pivot was for himself. It was so yeah. he didn't feel bad about himself or what he was planning on doing. That was that, that's what I'm saying. It none of this was for Natalie. None of this was him choosing Natalie was not for Natalie. It was so he could get the sex through the phone. Like it, it, none of it. <laughs> so you say what she should have done is put him in one room and her in the other, and you just called him on the phone, <laughs> and they'd still be together. And they still. Be- she she don't know what she's doing. <laughs> but what killed me was uh, so when they they get there and they walk in, and they, they, he's at the altar and stuff and he tells her no and then the last thing he says he's like but you look beautiful and walks off i had to rewind that a couple of times i said what did he say yeah no i'm not doing this and did it but you look hey hey you look beautiful and then walked off he's disgusting right disgusting but right okay anyway gets to the reunion and she tells him like i found this offensive that offensive that offensive yeah good good for me it's done it's done so yep so they are not together okay no. so and neither are sabrina i'm sorry and neither who else is not together sabrina and the other guy they broke up 
Yes, Sabrina and Steven. Yeah. yeah, so they didn't, we didn't really cover them because they were kind of, they were definitely boring to me. And we, so they didn't stand out for us, no offense. But, you know, I still thought they were going to stay together. I thought they were pretty good, that pretty solid couple. Turns out not so much. And that's that. Yeah. So that was Stephen and Sabrina, right? So Stephen and Sabrina, yeah. And they was they was having the, they was seemed like they were together. They was doing a lot of screwing. Like everything was working out. She was the marketer. He was talking about, oh, he's so what grounded and he meditates in the beginning. But then this is the thing. Soon as they separated and went their different ways, he stopped answering calls. He stopped really trying to get to her. But he said that everything in the relationship was going well because she said she was trying to make it work. He said everything was going well when the money, when the show was paying for everything. He said everything was going oh. well. He said, but... When he had to get back home and he had to use his debit card. <laughs> the way his checking account was set up and his savings account was set up, he just had to transfer some money over here and then put it back there and then probably take out a new credit card, see if he could get a frequent uh, airline ticket with those miles if he spends $2,000 in the first three months. So... <laughs> he said the way his bank accounts is set up, this ain't going to work. Then he tried to flip it. You don't understand. People go through things in life. You don't understand where I was right now financially. She was like, so then where was all this attention? I mean, during the show, she's like, the wall was over. I paid for this for you. I paid for this for you. He was like, and that's when the relationship was working. He said, <laughs> and when the show was paying, that's when the relationship was working. But when I had to use my ATM card. The math stopped mathing. <laughs> all right friend well there we go that was um what is it that was love, love is blind is, uk love is blind uk yeah here we broke down relationships on the mental health is a lifestyle podcast with my bestie all right family uh that was fun friend was that that was fun that yeah. was fun oh I'm always always fun click the bell that's right click the bell that's right y'all please don't forget that's right if you're scrolling by and you haven't done so already subscribe to the podcast and then click click this bell so that you get notifications every time there's a new episode up so thank you family for riding with us again on the mental health is a lifestyle podcast with your girl Andrea Wise Brown. <laughs>